The Spokane Comedy Club is shaking things up. How owners are adapting to stay open during a live entertainment ban. Warm, dry, and clear skies for your Thursday and Friday. But as we head into the weekend, we're going to see a cold front and some possible chance of rain on Monday. Joe Biden will not do what it takes to maintain order. The Trump family attacks Joe Biden as the Republican National Convention continues. What you might have missed from night three and what you can expect during night four tonight. Thousands of people are using plasma to treat coronavirus, but does it work? We connect the dots. Up with Krim starts right now with Jen York, Joshua Robinson, and Dana Marie McNichol. Good morning. Welcome to Up With Krem on your Thursday morning. The sports world took a stand yesterday on racial justice as teams around the country, including right here in Washington State, are boycotting the court and the field. The Seattle Mariners were one of six Major League Baseball teams that did not play yesterday, and the Mariners have the most black players on their roster out of any other MLB team. Coming up, we will have more on the other sports that protested across the state. All right, we're going to also take a look outside this morning, checking in with Dana Marie McNichol this morning as we have a beautiful shot of downtown Spokane. But Dana Marie, it sounds like a little bit more of the same is on the way coming up today. Yeah, Joshua, it's such a beautiful morning. You just see that sunrise. It just came up uh, around six o'clock this morning and it's going to be dry, warm highs of 87 throughout the region this morning. Definitely a pleasant summer day, but that's not really the case for another part of our country. Hurricane Laura right now is now a category two. It hit landfall at a category four this morning. We saw wind speeds from 150 miles per hour now reduced to 100 miles per hour. It's moving north a little bit towards Arkansas. It's expected to downgrade to a tropical storm, but of course we're going to keep an eye on that all morning long. But looking around uh, the temperatures here locally right now, sunshine across the board, 60s in Wenatchee, 51 in Moses Lake. Uh, then as we head to North Idaho, 53 in Coeur d'Alene and 43. That's pretty chilly over there in Sandpoint. Burr. Uh, if you're taking a walk this morning, maybe grab a jacket if you're in North Idaho. Here is your three day forecast. A look at what's ahead. 87 degrees and sunny for Thursday and Friday, but then we're going to see a cold front come through on Saturday, bringing some winds, also some high fire danger along with that. Uh, Sunday is going to bring temperatures into our 70s, and I'm going to give you a look at our seven day forecast and some potential for rain coming up. Jen. Dana Marie, thank you. Well, students will head back to school in some capacity in the next couple of weeks. Last night, Krem2 hosted a forum to answer your questions. We brought in experts to outfit parents with the best information to address new regulations and curriculum. Now, a top question was how do parents prepare kids emotionally for the next school year? I understand this is so stressful, and one of the best things we can do for our, our kids is to keep ourselves regulated and to model that because our kids need to feel safe and connected and supported and if we're stressed and anxious they're going to cue off that and i think part of what we want to do with our kids is just acknowledge that this is a completely unexpected event that's happened and we're working really hard to support you well, of course, there are many other changes to the upcoming school year, and we know this new information and, and taking it all in can certainly be stressful. So to keep up to date with all the latest school updates, you can stay tuned to here on Up With Krem. You can also text SCHOOL to 509-448-2000 for the latest information about specific schools and districts. Joshua? Thank you very much, Jen. 634 now here on your Thursday morning. Yesterday, as part of what's trending, was a big day for professional athletes who want to use their platforms for, for social change. And it did show on social media. We're going to start this morning with the Seattle Mariners. The Mariners joining the list of those professional sports teams that were on strike boycotting last night in response to the shooting of Jacob Blake. Mariners players unanimously decided not to play in their game last night against the San Diego Padres and the Mariners organization tweeted their support of the players. The Mariners have more black players on their roster than any other MLB team. Former Gonzaga pitcher Marco Gonzalez tweeted how proud he is of his team, but also says he's heartbroken for his brothers and teammates who fear for their lives and their families' lives on a daily basis. He says, quote, 
This isn't about baseball right now. It's about justice, equality, and understanding. His teammate Justin Dunn also tweeted saying how blessed he was to play on a team like the Mariners. The Seattle Sounders also decided to postpone their upcoming game in Los Angeles. The team made an announcement on Twitter saying we support our players. We stand with them and share their frustration with what we have witnessed. Together we fight racism. We are resolved and committed as an organization to use our platform in furtherance of change. These are just the teams in Washington State that we're talking about. Teams elsewhere, led by the Milwaukee Bucks, were one of the first to boycott their matchup against the Orlando Magic last night in protest of the police, police shooting. Coming up now on 650, uh, 636 rather. Now, as we learn more about coronavirus, we're also learning more about possible treatments. The latest involves plasma. Let's connect the dots. More than 70,000 people are using convalescent plasma as a treatment for COVID-19. Thousands more are on the list to receive it, but how does it work and could it help you? Let's connect the dots. To understand how convalescent plasma works, we start with a simple definition. Convalescent means anyone recovering from a disease, and plasma is the liquid portion of the blood. When people get sick, they develop antibodies for the infection in their plasma. So in this case, we're talking about the plasma found in people who have already recovered from COVID-19. To administer the treatment, health experts start by drawing the donor's blood and pumping it into a machine. That plasma is then separated from the donor's blood. The blood goes back into the donor, and the plasma can be used on a hospitalized COVID-19 patient to help them recover. More than 100,000 people have already signed up to get this treatment, and as that number increases, the FDA says they need more donors, both for plasma to give to patients and the data that comes along with it. While this is currently helping many people all over the country and is hailed as a major breakthrough, it is not a cure. Experts continue their research because we still need a vaccine for the virus. 637 now. Well, the Spokane Comedy Club is shaking things up during the pandemic. What the owners are doing to adjust to Washington's live entertainment ban. Good morning to you ahead on CBS this morning. One of the strongest hurricanes ever to hit the U.S. made landfall in southwestern Louisiana overnight. Tony is there. We'll have team coverage of Hurricane Laura in Louisiana and Texas. And more on this catastrophic damage and catastrophic is the word. Look at those pictures. We'll also talk with Texas Governor Greg Abbott and FEMA Administrator, his name is Pete Gaynor, on what they're doing to help people impacted by Laura. And we'll show you video of the hurricane's arrival. It was captured by storm chasers. Believe it or not, people actually go out in the storm to take these pictures and what they say about the force unleashed by Laura. We'll see you at 7 o'clock.